speaking to you from Reykjavik, Iceland, and I'm very happy to be here and share some of the some of the data that we've been working on during the past years. I'm I'm currently very active here in Iceland, but also um, as an epidemiologist, I sometimes want to have a larger sample size than 370,000 individuals. So uh, my base is also in Sweden. So I do a lot of um, studies there with my colleagues and, and go back and forth between these two countries. And so I, I will show you some examples of what we've been doing using the electronic health records and um, mostly looking at the sort of, um, sort of uh, the association between PTSD and other stress-related phenotypes at, with somatic conditions. Um, and hopefully it will highlight in the end, I'm not going to show you any um, genetic data for a while, we're, we're working on that, but, but uh, hopefully it will highlight the opportunities that exist in the electronic health records, uh, and particularly in the Nordic countries. Um, just a little a background of the, the Nordic um, registry resources, um, and probably most of you are aware of that, that in all of these countries, we are assigned a personal identification number that we are assigned at birth or immigration. And this follows us through all the registry resources that we have through our lives from birth to death. And it's uh, linked to the, in the drug prescription registers. So all prescribed drugs are, are registered on this number. Uh, and, um, and as I mentioned, the causes of death registry and the medical birth registers. And then importantly, what I will show you later on is that we have the patient registered, both uh, yielding inpatient uh, ICD codes and outpatient diagnoses actually made by uh, professionals um, on PTSD and other psychiatric disorders and even all other somatic conditions. And then in increasing amount we have, um, a, and it, this varies a little bit by uh, the Nordic countries where these data are accessible, but the primary care registers are, are, are starting to be um, uh, more accessible in Sweden from 2003, which I will show you later. And then we have the cancer registers. We have uh, statistics um, on socio-demographic factors, uh, economic factors. And then importantly, which I will probably highlight in the following slides, is that we usually we have a multi-generational registers that so we can map out the family, familial ties uh, in Iceland back to settlement um, in the 900s. Um, whilst uh, in Sweden, this goes to, very well to individuals born after 1932. And then, as you know, we of course have quite a lot of genetic resources uh, for a couple of hundred thousands. In Iceland, about for approximately 180,000 individuals. So two years ago or two and a half years ago, we received a large grant, uh, an ERC consolidator grant, uh, which we are sort of halfway through. And I'm going to share some of the data that we have generated during this time. But we, of course, at least in the work package too, we've mostly been in collecting data. Um, so I'll be showing you some results from work package one, where we, where we intended to determine sort of trauma and somatic disease related phenotypes. And, and then the next step is sort of to pinch on the underlying genetic mechanisms. And here we are using both Iceland against Swedish registry data. Uh, we're using um, genetic data from uh, Decode Genetics and Twin Gene in Sweden. And I'm going to focus on the stress related disorders and some somatic outcomes later on. Work package two that I, we are sort of diving into right now after being collecting data for several year, years is basically on the genetics of PTSD or related psychopathology where we'll be using the SARA cohort that we've been spending two years to collect data from almost 32,000 women. Uh, the Swedish tsunami cohort, where we are hoping to establish uh, uh, genetic data for 8,000 individuals, and then existing genetic data from twin gene of, of approximately 40,000 individuals. And most of these have um, 
uh, data on, con on continuous scale on, on PTSD symptomology. And then I'm going to show you some um, numbers from the Swedish uh, patient registers on the number of uh, individuals uh, with PTSD and related phenotypes that could be utilized for genetic research. Before I continue, I wanna um, acknowledge my dear colleague, Juan Song, who is the first author of all of these papers that I basically will present. And so she should basically be, be here, but she's moved back recently. I missed her terribly <laughs> um, uh, to uh, her home province in Sichuan, China. Uh, taking on a new position as a senior researcher at uh, in Chengdu, Sichuan University. So what we did have done together during the past two years is to, with other dear colleagues uh, in Sweden and in Iceland, is to use si the sibling design um, uh, and to, to conduct cohort studies ba based with sibling controlled uh, comparison where we have identified all from 66,000 individuals to 145,000 individuals with stress-related disorders, <coughs> meaning uh, PTSD, acute stress reaction adjustment disorders, and other reactions to severe stress, sorry. And these we have um, identified in the National Patient Register. We've done a population based design, basically picking 10 matched age and sex matched individuals without such disorders. And then importantly, we have identified the full siblings of these individuals with these disorders. <clears throat> um, we've used COX models and adjusted for educational level, family out, uh, income, marital status, comorbidities, family history of index disease. <clears throat> and previous history of psychiatric disorders. Um, the first paper, there was in the lot on, um, there were a few studies on, on, on stress-related disorders, particularly PTSD from military personnel, mostly uh, looking at the risk of autoimmune disease. But so we decided to look at this in the Swedish population and uh, uh, basically using uh, as a unique feature, uh, a sibling design. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, <clears throat> and thereby controlling for a lot of early life factors that are not available uh, and, and even genetic factors. And you see there that we identified 106,000 individuals during a 25 um, year period that were diagnosed with um, these stress-related disorders. And these are approximately our results. We looked at autoimmune because we were um, worried about surveillance bias. Then we, used, uh, we looked at uh, autoimmune disease beyond the first year. And you see that on average, there was about 30% increased risk of autoimmune, any autoimmune disease. We tested for 41 different autoimmune diseases and and there was an, an, an not an enormous difference between uh, the sibling cohort and the population cohort um, and another surprising thing is that there wasn't you know thinking of post-traumatic stress disorder as the most severe condition there wasn't a large difference between PTSD and the other um, acute stress reaction adjustment disorder or other stress reactions, the, these were also increased considerably the risk of autoimmune disease. Um, we tested, as I said, 41 distinct autoimmune disease. We found for individual diseases that um, stress related disorders were associated with 18 of these and the relative risk they varied considerably giving a few examples here, Addison disease, there was a, a doubled risk or um, the hazard ratio was 2.2. Autoimmune thyroid disease uh, increased by 50%. And the same for lupus and MS increased by 22%. And then rheumatoid arthritis is just marginally significant here. Um, 
we went further and looked at uh, cardiovascular disease. And here, actually, there are, ha have been quite a lot of studies, mostly. Uh, and we actually reviewed these studies, uh, 11 perspective studies in our paper that was published yet last year. But similarly to using the sibling design, which we were sort of highlighting as a strength here, we found considerably, you see in this top panel here, the, the hazard ratio, how it develops during the first year. And it goes from approximately four during the first month to towards maybe 1.5. And then you see the follow-up here that the risk basically stays above 1.2 throughout the 25 years of follow-up. And here you can contrast the, the results from the sibling uh, cohort uh, uh, within the first year on the top here, and then after the first year uh, to the actual, um, um, to the population cohort on the, on the right side panel. Uh, and, and you see that there is some drop in the hazard ratios when you go from um, the population cohort to the sibling cohort. So there's so, some familial compounding that we're actually adjusting for. And here we looked at individual disorders that had actually not been done before just due to power con uh, constraints, I think, in previous studies. And we saw an extremely, I mean, most of these uh, conditions, uh, cardiovascular disc conditions were considerably high, but we saw some extreme increase during the first year of, for instance, heart failure, and, and then artery thrombosis and embolus was considerably doubled um, during the, the remaining follow-up. We, as was highlighted before, there is a, a, a really strong um, uh, history of studies looking at stress and various stressors and uh, the risk for sort of minor infections like common cold. Um, there weren't a lot of studies. I think we found maybe one or two looking at more hazardous um, life or life-threatening infections such as sepsis endocarditis, meningitis, or other CNS, uh, CNS infections, or even fatal infections of any source. So we, we did that exactly in this study. And here, just a very shortly showing the, the results. And I'm showing here, basically, and that was common for all of, the, all of these uh, studies, basically, that the, the, uh, the increased risk was mainly or considerably high for the younger uh, or individuals um, exposed at an early age and, and uh, was attenuated a little bit with age of, ex of exposure. Um, but you see that uh, there was a little bit, you can see here actually that post-traumatic stress disorder in the sibling design was giving, yielding very high, quite higher estimates than in the um, for any stress-related uh, disorder. Um, finally, a paper that was just published um, where we were looking at neurodegenerative disease, um, uh, where we identified Swedish-born individuals actually that um, uh, had uh, been diagnosed with any stress-related disorder. And here shortly, that we um, used a similar methodology and found approximately 40 to 50% increased risk of when ad having adjusted for most of the covariates here and not a, you know, a huge difference, but some difference between the sibling cohort. But mostly what was really striking was the finding of uh, really a doubled increased risk for vascular dementia or vascular uh, neurodegenerative disease, primarily vascular dementia. So in conclusion, uh, these studies based on electronic health records in Sweden, they demonstrate that um, severe psychiatric reactions, uh, whether PTSD or other stress-related disorders are associated with these conditions, autoimmune disease, cardiovascular disease, 
severe infections and neurodegenerative disease, some of them at least. And the general pattern was that young age at exposure and severe, uh, severe disorders were associated with higher risk. Um, and data that I didn't show is that persistent use of SSRI medications was in some conditions, particularly um, for the life-threatening infections, if you took SSRI medications during the first year, your risk of the index outcome was considerably attenuated. Now, just showing you a little data on what we're working on now, so looking at psychiatric sequel after a different trauma, we have identified uh, several, like for transportation accidents, uh, over 400,000 individuals where we're looking at all incident psychiatric disorders, the first psychiatric disorder diagnosed, and you see how the risk is here. And, and for stress-related disorders, you see that on the, on the right panel here. But when we're looking at, which is the same, which is, it has sort of been established through questionnaire data, when you look at interpersonal violence, you see that the hazard ratios actually come to really, really high levels. And you see here in this corner here, even though we have quite a few, just very few exposed, we see um, uh, hazard ratios that I have not at least encountered in my um, working life as a scientist. Um, so we're working on this and trying to replicate this in different um, countries, Nordic countries. Lastly, to the Nordic registers and, and an example from Sweden showing uh, opportunities for genetic research. Um, uh, here we have identified individuals born after 1975 where we know that there was a blood spot collected after birth. And we see the numbers here that for all stress-related disorders, we have approximately 113,000 combining data from patients diagnosed through the Stockholm Primary Care Register and then from the patient register um, for the whole country. And this, and here only 10% of them are PTSD and the rest of them have other stress-related diagnoses. But this is an interesting resource, I think, for genetic studies and we uh, hope to be able to fund um, um, doing genotyping on these individuals. Last, I want to mention um, a co the, uh, my cohort that we're working on now on genetic analysis for PTSD symptoms using the PCL5 uh, in collaboration with Decode Genetics, and we hope to uh, be able to um, contribute these data uh, to the P PGC um, and, and to share these data uh, with you guys um, soon. And then uh, the stress, uh, the, we have, of course, uh, Iceland is a place for natural disasters and Sweden is really not, but we, we've collected a lot of data from uh, sufferers of natural disasters. Uh, and in Sweden, mostly the Swedish tsunami cohort, and we are now collecting data uh, genetic data from these individuals. And lastly, uh, I'm just going to uh, mention briefly the Nordic Psychiatric COVID-19 Consortium, where we are now establishing uh, uh, questionnaire data collections in all Nordic country, countries, combining register and genetic resources with these data. Um, so just some opportunities for, for the future.